Hello everyone, and welcome to my tutorial on drag animations with Prima Motion. In this tutorial, you will learn how to implement the drag feature, and probably incorporate it in some of your projects too. I will also be covering some niche cases that you might run into towards the end. Everything here is in the docs provided by Framer, but some don't have examples, or are harder to find, and understand, just like every other doc out there. Just a disclaimer, just because you're dragging around the other components doesn't mean that you're actually changing the position. It's not used to swapping elements, but just rearranging them for a better look and experience. To start off, we can do the classic MPX create React app. Oh, React app, and whatever you want to call it. I mean, you don't have to use MPX, you just use whatever you use. And after that's done, do npm install Framer dash motion. And when that's done, right, oh wow that thing is installing, you can delete whatever files you deem unnecessary in the source folder, like the logos. And then probably something over here too. And here. I also deleted the index file. So you could probably do that too. To show I don't have any special gimmicks over here, you know, there's nothing here. Everything is blank. Alright, get rid of the suit. Okay, so then we have to do npm start. And while that thing is starting up, let's not waste time. And import motion from framer motion. And we won't be touching the parent class app. We'll be creating a new div called motion.div. It needs the motion for it to work. And we'll give it a class name of box1. Save that. And over here, give us some default styling like uh, padding 0, margin 0, and then box sizing, or the box. And then we target the app class, the parent div, of, and then give a width of 100VW, a height of 100VH, and then display, whoops, a flex, justify content center, because looks better that way, a line item center, because that also looks better that way. Now we target the box 1 element, and give it a width of 500 pixels, a height of 500 pixels, and then the background color of gray, because that's easy to type. And then we save it, refresh it, and there we have it. We have a, nothing but a gray box here. So, to make a drag, right, we have to just add the drag prop here, save it, and now it's draggable. Refresh it first. Yeah, it's still draggable. But you see, it can move outside of the box over here. So in our style, we can want, we want to add a, an overflow hidden. I mean, unless you don't want to add that. And now it won't make the scroll bars appear. For the next part, we're going to learn the while drag prop. So here I could say while drag. This is basically like an event listener. And what do you want to do while it's dragging? We're going to say we can scale 1.1. Save that. And then dragging it. As you can see, it scaled up by 1.1. But it doesn't scale when you just mass spam click it. Another one you could do is probably like rotate, uh, I don't know, 360 degrees. Right, save that. And you drag it, you can see it spins, but only one time. If you want to like continuously spin, you should probably give it like some anime prop or some keyframes. The next part goes back to the drag prop. And the drag prop, we can actually specify the direction it can only drag to. As you can see from the suggestions here, where if we just give it an x prop value, you can only drag in the x but not the y. And if we give it a y value, save that, you can only drag in the y but not in the x. So you can just limit the direction in which you can drag with this. Now let's talk about the constraints. Because right now, you know, you can drag the box. Wait, let me get rid of this. Right now you can like drag the box everywhere, you can even throw it out the screen. But you know you don't want that to happen, so 
we want to give some constraints to it. And we can do that by using the drag constraints prop and then pass in a value of like top, bottom, left, and right. For this example, let's just focus on the left. And we can pass in negative 100. <laughs> what that does is basically limits the how far we can drag to the left side. And once we get past that 100 mark, it bounces you back. But the same doesn't apply to the right unless you give it a right prop, a right object. So let's say 100. Then left 100, right 100. Same applies for top and bottom too. Top of 100 pixels, and then bottom of 100 pixels. I forgot which one was a negative one. Okay, this one was a negative one. Okay, top negative 100, bottom positive 100, right positive 100, left negative 100. Now you might be wondering, you know, calculating these numbers might be a little bit of a hustle to do. Isn't there like an easier way to constrain this box within the parent element? And yes, there is. With the useRef hook from React, useRef, and then we create it. Whoa, parent ref goes to useRef, and then over here we refer it. And then over here, instead of passing in all this mumbo jumbo, we can pass in the parent ref, and frame of motion will automatically calculate the top right, or bottom left for us. So if you look at it now, you know, the container, the the box, won't get out of the container. No matter how hard you drag it, it will always come back to within the container, even though it only leaves for like a little while. For the next part, this is a little bit more of a, I don't know if I should use it or not kind of thing. It's the drag elastic. So what this is basically is uh, it limits the movement for when the container hits the edge. And by default, it's set to 5. Oops. Set to 5. And um, not 5, 0.5. 0.5, you see, there's like no difference, right? But if you set it to zero, there will be no movement when you hit the edge. As you can see, it doesn't bounce anymore. There's no elastic power to it. If you set it to one, however, you see, it has a lot of power and it pushes out, out of the container for like a little while. So this number you can mess around with to see get the feel for it, but I wouldn't be touching it personally. And now let's talk about the drag uh, snapback to origin. In case you couldn't tell by its name snapback to origin, what it basically does is snapback to origin. By default, it's set to false, so you can set your true to enable it. And when we save that, and then we drag it, it will, as you can see, snap back to origin. It doesn't matter where we drag it, how far we drag it, it will always come back to this one spot. Next, let's talk about drag momentum. By default, you know, this is the default behavior. If you drag and let go, it will slide, but you could turn it off by setting it to false. And now when you drag and let go, it won't slide, it just stays there. It's a personal preference of whether you, you, know, you should use it or not completely up to you. Now for the next part, this is more the intermediate kind of thing. So let's create another motion.div and give it a class name of box2. Box2, make it a, also a drag component. Over here, box2, give it a width of 100 pixels, a height of 100 pixels, and the background of red, because that's easier to type. Now we can drag, oops. We could drag the red around, right? But what if I want to drag both of them in a cool way? So this is where the uh, drag propagation comes in. 
And if we set it to true, and see what happens. You drag uh, the parent div, box 1, nothing happens. But if you drag box 2, you get this cool effect. You can probably like, incorporate it with some image so that it gives off this like 3D feel to it. But other than that, it's completely useless in my opinion. Another useless or personal preference kind of prop is the drag lock, directions lock. And what this is, let me combo this out first, is it locks, it limits the direction in which you can drag. Just like how setting drag to equal to x or drag equals to y. So now we can only drag in the y direction or we can drag in the x direction but not both. As you can see. You could do some fancy things with it or whatnot because there is an on direction lock event listener where you can just pass in the event and the console.log it log and then whatever you drag it right something will come out in the console but I will not be showing that so for this part I classify it as a an uh, advanced topic because first let me delete it let's just say I have this component right here and the whole thing is draggable but what if I want to limit it to only a small section of it being draggable like a desktop app Right, the browser, you can only drag the browser from the top, you can't drag it from the middle. So what do I mean by that? Let's uncomment this out, remove the motion. Oops. And the drag. Save it. Over here we give it 100% width, so it covers up the entire thing. As you can see, right now, we can drag it with the gray, and we can drag it with the red. But what if I only want it to be draggable with the red, right? I want the red to control the entire component. How do we accomplish that? Well, in frame of motion, there is a use drag controls hook. And we can create a controls for it. So that's a use drag controls. What this does is basically it controls when we want this dragging event to fire. When do we want it to happen? We have the power to control it now. And here we have to pass it in. Drag controls. It goes to control. We save that. And as you can see, it's not doing what we want, right? Because That's because first we have to disable it. Disable the drag listener. That's a false. Let's set it true by default. And now this thing can no longer be dragged anywhere. Undraggable. So now, this opens up the door for us to control it from other places, like the child. So here we can say on pointer down, pass in the E event, and here we can say controls dot start, here also pass in the E, save it, and okay this part works, and this part doesn't work, which is exactly what we wanted. This is just like a desktop app now. Another problem that you might run into is with the input type of slider because for sliders to work, right, you need to drag the slider, the dumb, and for it to set a new value. But on drag, you drag an entire component and um, that kind of nullifies the slider value until it reaches the edge. Then you're able to drag it to the value that you want. This is kind of a bad uh, user experience, so we need to find a way to fix it. I have an example that I got. I can show you guys. It's a project that I've been working on recently. On a local host 2001. And this is a project I've been working on recently. For now, it's just a video player. As you can see, it's draggable. Let me press play. It works. Um, I think the volume's a little low, so let me up that. But as you can see, me dragging the player also prevents me from increasing the volume. Same for the other side. But I do have a scroll that increases it on scroll. So that's a band-aid fix for it. But let's find let's think of a way to permanently fix this, right? Permanently make this thing 
scrollable, I mean not scrollable, draggable, but preventing this thing from dragging. So first we comment this out. And then over here we add the input type range. And then over here, let's just see what happens first. Right? If we try to drag it, it won't drag because the drag listener sets it false. But at least this thing works. But if we remove the drag listener, this thing works. But now the the input range doesn't work. So let's put it back and then copy this method from the child class, child component. And paste it over here. And then instead of um, point it down, we just start it, right? We put it in an if statement. And if e dot target dot type is equal to range, uh, we don't do anything because if it's the range slider, don't do anything. Else, we just start the drag event. Save that. Refresh it just in case. Drag this. Okay, this thing works. And then drag this. Okay, now this thing works. And there you have it. It's a band-aid fix, but it works, right? And I know that some of you guys might want to do something like uh, to change the background to like something transparent, like RGBA 70, 70, 70, and then 0.3. Make it look transparent over here. Maybe add like a little div, type something over here. And then look, it's transparent, right? And then you might want to do something like, oh, I want to do like some uh, filter on it. So backdrop filter, blur it, and give it like one pixel. Let's see what happens. Okay, that works. But suggest that you guys don't do this because it's really intensive, CPU intensive. And since there's like not a lot of things on my screen or my end, right, it's not that laggy. But if there's like a lot of uh, other components on your end, gets really laggy at times and it's overall it's a bad experience. There's also the on drag, on drag start, and on drag end, but those are self-explanatory. If you guys do decide to add the drag feature to your project, please share with us what crazy designs you came up with in the comments down below. And with that being said, thank you all for watching and I hope you learned something new. See you next time.